In September of 2022, for those of you watching from the future, which, by the way, how's it going there? If you're watching this in the future, let me know in the comments. Anyway, in September, prominent paranormal scientist and Nessie expert Ron Halliday gave an interview to The Mirror, where he stated his belief that the Loch Ness Monster is from a parallel universe that we just may not be able to perceive. I'll be talking about the insane physics of parallel universes in a little bit, so stick around for that if you want to see me totally nerd out. He stated that many of the sightings and her disappearance thereafter may be explained by certain people being more psychically sensitive and picking up on things that are existing in multiple universes at once or even something from the past. He went on to say that some people may even walk through portals to another dimension without realizing it and that is where they may have seen the Loch Ness Monster and other cryptids. With so many sightings across hundreds of years, it's beginning to seem more and more likely that she can actually travel through time and space and may be a being from another dimension. But the discussion of portals actually brings us to our our number nine, the upside down. One of the many ways that parallel universes are often theorized as operating is that they exist at the same time as ours, but with very minor differences, running next to each other like the branches of a tree. However, this is not the only theory. Scientists are now discovering that there may actually be an upside down, like what is described in Netflix's Stranger Things, a universe that is the exact opposite of ours, existing on top, or rather below, our own, and we may have found a portal to enter it. Scientists at NASA NASA's Antarctic Impulsive Transient Antenna, or ANITA for short, have been conducting experiments with very interesting results. Their antenna is located where there is the least amount of radio interference so that they can measure as accurately as possible. And they've found that a constant, quote, wind of particles arrives on Earth from outer space. There are subatomic particles called neutrinos detected, some of which have very low energy and mass that is close to zero, and they can pass right through the Earth. But anything larger or with higher mass gets stopped by the matter of the Earth. Because of this, we should only be seeing these high energy particles coming down from space, but instead they're also seeing some come up from the Earth. And this implies that the particles are actually reversing through time. And this suggests the existence of a parallel universe where time runs backwards and the world exists in opposition with itself. It would have been created at the same time as the Big Bang, with one universe running forward through time and one backwards. After all, every action has an equal and opposite opposite reaction, right? Very interesting stuff. And maybe that's where Nessie exists, you know, traveling forward and backward through time, and that's why sightings have dwindled over the years, and we may have just found a way to enter it. Number eight, mirror dimension. Now before I tell you about this next one, give this video a like if you're enjoying it so far, it really helps us out. Now without spoiling anything for you, in Stranger Things, one of the ways to access the upside down is through portals, some of which exist in water, and scientists may have found one on the sea floor, and I think that if another one of these exists in Loch Ness, we may have found our answer on where Nessie goes when no one is watching. About two kilometers below the ocean's surface in the Gulf of California, marine researchers have been conducting experiments and collecting data from microbes on the sea floor. Way down below, they discovered something incredible, a mirror pool where on the bottoms and inside of fissures of some rocks, there are microbes that move in very strange ways and create a perfect reflection of what is around them. Some of this is caused by individual ecosystems ecosystems forming near hydrothermal vents that shoot out all sorts of crazy chemicals and microbes from under the earth. The difference between what collects on the edges of these fissures and in the center is baffling scientists, and some believe that you may actually be able to send something through it into the earth, and that may be a way into another dimension. Perhaps the upside down is this where the Loch Ness Monster goes? Number seven. All right, we need to actually discuss a few sightings of Nessie from over the years because they actually help explain where and when she appears and disappears. Sightings have been reported since 564 CE when St. Columbia allegedly had to compel a strange creature to not attack one of their followers. But reports stopped until 1527 when Duncan Campbell sighted a terrible beast on the shore of the Loch. There were more sightings here and there, but no real evidence until 1933 when Hugh Gray took a picture of what appears to be the hump and fin of our lake dwelling friend. When it was published in a local newspaper, it was accompanied by a note from Kodak, the film company, who stated that the negatives had not been altered in any way. It's strange that all of the pictures of Nessie and other cryptids are so blurry and far away, especially since we all have 4K cameras in our pockets now. But maybe she's just smarter than we
we think, or she can only appear on film and not digital, or perhaps she really does fade into another dimension, but there is a live camera set up on Loch Ness if you want to watch out for her yourself. Number six, drop in reports. For the 90 years that Loch Ness monster sightings have been recorded, there were always multiple sightings yearly, and even if some of them turned out to be a hoax, there were still reports. But 2013 was the first year that there were no sightings at all. This came after a string of years with declining numbers of sightings, so it seems a trend was forming, and she had decided to spend less and less time on our plane of existence. But since 2013, reports have skyrocketed, increasing every year to nearly 20 in each of the past few years. Some of this is because of the webcam system that's been set up, combined with the stay-at-home isolation of the past few years. More people are on the lookout, and more sightings have happened. Strange wakes occur in the water, humps are spotted rising out, and strange movements on the shore are just some of the things captured on the webcam. Number five, prehistoric evidence. Now, one of the main theories about what Nessie may be is that she's actually a form of plesiosaur, a sea-dwelling dinosaur that supposedly went extinct about 66 million years ago, along with the rest of the dinosaurs. These were characterized as carnivorous creatures with four fins, long necks, and humpbacked bodies who fed on fish and other sea creatures. They were thought to have existed only in seawater, but in 2021 in the Sahara Desert, paleontologists found new evidence of their existence in freshwater. In what was once an ancient freshwater riverbed, bones were found of small plesiosaurs that must have adapted to move from the ocean and into river and lake systems. And if this could happen in one place, what would stop them from doing the same to enter an ancient river system in Europe and eventually become what we call the Loch Ness Monster? Perhaps if they couldn't physically travel there because a little thing called land was in the way, they traveled through another river, one created and formed from space-time. Speaking of space-time, our number four entry concerns how it can be bent and morphed to do all sorts of crazy things. When Albert Einstein created his theory of special relativity, he explained that the speed of light was a constant, about 300,000 kilometers per second, or 186,000 miles per second for my American friends, and that this constant could be observed throughout space and time. But the only way that this could be constant between the two simultaneously is if space and time were linked. So as someone in a rocket approaches the speed of light, they would perceive time to be slower and the lengths of objects to be shorter compared to someone moving at a much slower speed. So in theory, if you could find a way to bend space time, either through some advanced technology or perhaps some mystical energy. You could travel incredible distances or through time near instantly. Along with this, the existence of dark matter, which is a strange form of matter that is invisible, yet incredibly dense and makes up five times more of the universe than normal matter does. It can actually bend gravity and space-time around itself. Is there a large pocket of dark matter in Loch Ness that allows Nessie to bend space around it and move to another time? Perhaps she is actually a dinosaur from the past, unwittingly traveling around and trying to find her way home. Number three, the Mandela Effect. I'm sure many of you have heard of the Mandela Effect, but I'll give a brief summary. Essentially, it's a phenomenon of mass misremembering of events, such as the one where it got its name, where before his death in 2013, many, many people remembered Nelson Mandela having already died in the 1980s. There are countless examples of these collective memory lapses, like Looney Tunes being spelled with O's instead of a U, the Monopoly Man having a monocle, or other small changes in our reality, you know, a glitch in the Matrix, if you will. Lots of people think these changes in their memory prove the existence of many parallel universes where each small change creates an entirely new universe. And maybe that's where Nessie exists, as a collective memory from another universe that we no longer reside in. But the theory of multiple universes existing at once is not the one that I find the most plausible. Number two, the big bounce. Now, this is personally one of my favorite things to talk about when it comes to theoretical physics, which doesn't sound exciting I know, but I promise you it's really cool. When the universe was created in the Big Bang, all the particles and energy of the universe were shot out into empty space from a singular point at incredible speeds. This theory suggests that as the universe expands, space-time and gravity will both be pulling against it as it expands, eventually reaching a point of equilibrium in a few billion years. And when this happens, one of two things will occur. Either the universe will continue to expand and tear space-time, causing the eventual 
actual death of the universe, or what I find to be more likely is the forces pulling against the universe will draw it all the way back inwards down to a single point, only to bounce off again, creating another big bang and expanding. This is how parallel universes may function, not because there are many existing at once, but because this universe has and will continue to exist an infinite number of times, expanding and contracting, having minor differences each time. This is where Nessie could come into this, because perhaps she existed in one version of this universe, but not another. And some people are only seeing the echoes of where she once was. I think that the number one spot on this list of evidence may actually be the sheer lack of evidence. Now I know this may be contradictory and not particularly good science, but we're talking about a mythological beast here, so we need to take it a little easy on our expectations. While there have been so many sightings, images captured, and even sounds recorded of the monster, no one has captured it well enough on film or gotten close enough to call it true evidence. Scientists have used sonar, radar, trawled the bottom of the lake, and performed all sorts of experiments to see if it exists and found nothing. Yet there are still so many reports that come up each year, and some of them are pretty convincing. And it makes me wonder if Nessie is smarter than we think. Perhaps even a being of greater intelligence that outwits us and moves between universes, baffling humans in each of them, just for a good time. With so many sightings but so little solid evidence, the Loch Ness Monster truly remains a mystery, and it may just be one that's bigger than we ever imagined. 1941 sighting. It was December in 1941, and two brothers by the names of Callum McFarlane Barrow and Patrick thought that they must have been dreaming. They saw a large creature in the loch near Fort Augustus. Much to their surprise, they ended up seeing the same creature again later that day. They absolutely think that they saw the Loch Ness as it looked nothing like anything they had ever seen before. Apparently in 2018, Callum explained that sightings of the monster were much more common at that time. In our number 9 spot, we have the sighting of 1961. It was May in 1961 and a man named George Coots was with three of his friends and they were driving to foyers on the south side of the loch at 8pm in the evening. In case you don't know, loch means lake. They pulled over and looked into the loch, aka a lake, where the Loch Ness was known to be in when they saw what looked like an elephant's back. They tried to flag down a passing car so that they could grab some more witnesses, but it wouldn't stop. They decided to not tell anyone and George finally came out with the story in September of 2019. Wow, that's a long time to be holding that story in. In our number 8 spot we have the sighting of May 1969. It was May of 1969 and a man named Fred Millwood was traveling towards Inverness when he spotted what he described as a 10 to 12 foot long creature traveling across the lock at about 4 miles per hour. He described the creature as if it was an upturned boat and there was no head in sight. When the creature was about 200 to 300 meters from the other side of the lake, it vanished. Fred waited for about a half an hour but nothing occurred after that. Ah, too bad. Poor Fred. In our number 7 spot, we have the sighting of October 1969. In October of 1969, two men by the names of Peter McKenzie and his uncle, Peter, were out fishing in a small boat at the north side of the loch. While fishing, they experienced two sightings of old Nessie. The first time it appeared, they saw something under the water that was coming at them like a speedboat from the direction of the Klansman Hotel. They then realized that it was definitely not an underwater boat. And it's shape appeared much different before it disappeared. Then it resurfaced and headed for the middle of the lake where they were able to see it in profile. Peter described it as if it had the color and shape of an elephant. It then disappeared under the water and their boat was rocked so hard by the waves from it. In our number 6 spot we have July 1987. In July of 1987, Aaron O. Fodhagen was visiting from Ireland and riding the bus on an overcast but windy day. Aaron says that as they were coming up to Ivor Morriston, she was looking out into the lake from the bus and saw what looked like a giant boulder in the middle of the lake. She said that she knew that there were no boulders in the lake as it's a glacial lake and the sides go straight down. She reported and is quoted as saying, The object was brown in color and the swell of the waves only came up halfway on the object so I estimated that it was at least 5 feet out of the water. The length looked more than the height, maybe 5 to 8 feet long. I could not say it was moving as the bus was moving. I got the impression it was stationary. I watched the object for less than 2 minutes, but it felt like eternity. That was the effect it had on me. 
stunned I was. My sighting ended when the bus got near Ivor Morriston. She then went on to speak about how she returned the next day and of course the boulder was gone. In our number 5 spot we have the sighting of June 1989. On the 25th of June 1989, Mrs. Judy Chaffin was visiting Scotland from Vancouver Island when she caught the most extraordinary thing on her camera. The story is that she caught a 10 foot long animal with a basketball sized head zigzagging across Urquit Bay at 4.45 p.m. in the afternoon. The sighting was verified as an unknown animal by Dr. Gordon Williamson, who is a marine biologist in the area. The locals, of course, were convinced it was Nessie. I wish I had that footage to share, but as you can imagine, this was from 33 years ago, and so it is probably on a VHS tape lost in a dusty attic at this point. In our number four spot, we have the sighting of 1990. 1990 was the year of a few sightings in almost every Every year after this, there are many, many sightings reported. The most notable sighting was from April 26, 1990. Two men by the name of Trevor Davis and Jimmy McIntyre, both from a city in Scotland called Iverness, reported seeing a huge creature circling in the water near the mouth of River Foyers. They have stated that its neck rose six feet out of the water. In our number three spot, we have the sighting of 1999. It was February 22, 1999, and a tourist spotted Nessie out of the water fully for the first time since June 1963. Apparently Nessie was spotted out of the water on the shores of Loch Ness by an American visitor. The sighting was at 8.30 in the evening between Doris and Foyers. The creature was reported as being about 10 to 15 meters long with a very long neck. Apparently as the man approached the creature, it quickly went back into the water and out of sight. Wow. I truly wonder how these sightings are verified as it's always possible that this man was, you know, on an illicit drug or that maybe he just wanted some attention, but then it's also possible that he could have actually witnessed an ancient creature that seemingly picks and chooses who it reveals itself to. In our number two spot, we have the sighting of March 17th, 2021. This sighting comes equipped with a video, so I'm gonna let you decide on this one. This is a video from a farm looking upon the lock on March 17th, 2021. Ace. St. Patrick's Day sighting. In this video, you clearly see a dark shadow pop up in the water and you watch it move across the lake. As it perhaps turns to the side, we get quite the profile shot of it and it appears to be long. Now, this is a lake. There are no long or big sharks in this lake. So this is quite a notable sighting. Whether the shadow is a large dark fish is debatable because it is quite long at one point and it is quite a dark shadow. Does that look like a fish to you? Would love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. In our number one spot, we have the October 19th, 2021 sighting. On October 19th, 2021, not too long ago, Erin Fagan captured something extraordinary on her webcam. She's a bit of a veteran when it comes to filming Nessie and has a YouTube channel with a variety of recordings that she's made. Quite a lot of them leave you thinking, huh, what is that? This one in particular is one of them. In this video, you see an extremely long and dark something in the lake and towards the end of the video, you see it go deeper into the water and then when a boat starts to come into view in the lake, the creature completely disappears. The creature looked to be at least a couple of feet or more. The video is so interesting and I hate that it's not more clear. Most recent sighting. During the last weekend in August, fans of Nessie went on a huge hunt for the monster. That's when the sixth so-called sighting of the Loch Ness Monster this year was recorded by a woman who was baffled after seeing a curved creature in the legendary water on August 31st. Fiona Wade claimed that it was like nothing I've seen before and I can only describe as Nessie. She reported seeing something similar to which was spotted by civil servant Alistair Gray on August 26th. Mr. Gray saw three odd and seemingly connected shapes near Inver Morrison. Miss Wade said her sighting was almost identical to that seen by Mr. Gray and probably in a very similar location. I might add that I was not aware of this sighting on Saturday until returning home this evening. Evening. It initially looked like a periscope, but then two curve areas followed. It was moving about halfway in the lock, looking roughly over to midway between Foyers and Whitebridge, she said. I've seen deer crossing before, but this was like nothing I have seen before, and I can only describe it as Nessie, as I can't think of any other logical thing it could have been. It was large enough to catch my eye and appear to leave slight wake behind it, she added. The sighting took place at 10.45 a.m. The water was calm, and there was allegedly no 
nearby boat activity. The sighting, which lasted 30 to 40 seconds, has been accepted by the official Loch Ness Monster Sightings Register. Number 9. The First Sighting The earliest report of a monster in the vicinity of Loch Ness appears in The Life of St. Columba by Adamon, written in the 7th century AD. According to Adamon, writing about a century after the events described, Irish monk St. Columba was staying in the land of the Picts with his companions when he encountered local residents burying a man by the river Ness. They explained that the man was swimming in the river when he was attacked by a water beast that mauled him and dragged him underwater, despite their attempts to rescue him by boat. Columba sent a follower, Lujin Mako Min, to swim across the river. The beasts approached him, but Columba made the sign of the cross and said, go no further, do not touch the man, go back at once. The creature stopped as if it had been pulled back with ropes and fled, and Columba's men and the pigs gave thanks for what they perceived as a miracle. The believers in the monster point to this story set in the river Ness rather than the lock itself as evidence for the creature's existence as early as the 6th century. Number 8. Aldi McKay The best known article that first attracted a great deal of attention about the creature was published on May 2nd, 1933 in the Intervest Courier about a large beast or whale-like fish. The article by Alex Campbell, water bailiff for Loch Ness and part-time journalists, discussed a sighting by Aldi McKay of an enormous creature with the body of a whale rolling in the water in the loch while she and her husband John were driving on the A82 April 15th, 1993. Now, the Courier in 2017 published excerpts from the Campbell article, which has been titled Strange Spectacle in Loch Ness. The creature disported itself, rolling and plunging for fully a minute, its body resembling that of a whale, and the water cascading and churning like a simmering cauldron. Soon, however, it disappeared in boiling mass of foam. Both onlookers confessed that there was something uncanny about the whole thing, for they realized that there was no ordinary dizzen in the depths because, apart from its enormous size, the beast, in taking the final plunge, sent out waves that were big enough to have been caused by a passing steamer. Number 7. Arthur Grant On January 5th, 1934, a motorcyclist, Arthur Grant, claimed to have nearly hit the creature while approaching Abriakin near the northeastern end of the loch at about 1am on a moonlit night. According to Arthur, the creature had a small head attached to a long neck. Then the creature saw him and crossed the road back to the loch. Arthur, a veterinary student, described it as a cross between a seal and a plesiosaur. He said he dismounted and followed it to the loch, but only saw ripples. He produced a sketch of the creature that was examined by zoologist Maurice Burton, who stated it was consistent with the appearance and behavior of an otter, but I'm not too sure. Regarding the long size of the creature reported by Arthur, it has been suggested that this was a faulty observation due to the poor lighting conditions, and paleontologist Darren Nash has suggested that Arthur may have seen either an otter or seal and exaggerated his sighting over time, but I don't care what they say, that drawing he drew of the beast is the Loch Ness Monster, it's not just a simple otter. Number 6. Surgeon photograph. The surgeon's photograph is the first photo of the creature's head and neck that was taken by Robert Kenneth Wilson, a London gynecologist, and was published in the Daily Mail on April 21st, 1934. According to Dr. Wilson, he was looking at the lock when he saw the monster, grabbed his camera, and snapped four photos. Only two exposures came out clearly. The first reportedly shows a small head and back, and the second shows a similar head in a diving position. The first photo became well known, and the second attracted little publicity because of its blurriness. Now, for 60 years, the photo was considered evidence of the monster's existence, although skeptics dismissed it. The photo scale was controversial as it often showed cropped, making the creature seem large and the ripples like waves, while the uncropped shot shows the other end of the lock and the monster in the center. The ripples in the photo were found to fit the size and pattern of small ripples rather than large waves photographed up close. Analysis of the original image fostered further doubt, and in 1993, the makers of the Discovery Communications documentary, Loch Ness Discovered, analyzed the uncropped image and found a white object visible in every version of the photo, implying that it was on the negative. An analysis of the full photo indicated that the object was small, about 2-3 to three feet long, but I don't know though, that just sounds like a cover up to me. Number 5. Dinsdale Film Aeronautical engineer Tim Dinsdale filmed a hump that left a wake crossing Loch Ness in 1960. Tim, who reportedly had the sighting on his final day of search, described the creature as reddish with blotches on its side. He said that when he mounted his camera, the object 
began to move, and he shot 40 feet of film. According to Jark, the object was probably animate, and others were skeptical, saying that the bump cannot be ruled out as being a boat. In 1993, Discovery Communications produced the documentary, again, Loch Ness Discovered, with a digital enhancement of the Dinsdale film. A person who enhanced the film noticed a shadow in the negative that was not obvious in the developed film. By enhancing and overlaying frames, he found what appeared to be a rear body of a creature underwater. Before I saw the film, I thought the Loch Ness Monster was a load of rubbish. Having done enhancement, I'm not too sure, they said. Number 4. George Edwards Photograph on August 3rd, 2012, skipper George Edwards claimed a photo he took on November 2nd, 2011 shows Nessie. George claims that he had searched for the monster for 26 years and reportedly spent 60 hours per week on the lock aboard his boat, Nessie Hunter IV, taking tourists for rides on the lake. He said, in my opinion, it probably looks kind of like a manatee, but not a mammal. When people see three humps, they're probably just seeing three separate monsters. Other researchers have questioned the photograph's authenticity, and Loch Ness researcher Steve Feltman suggests that the object in the water is a fiberglass hump used in the National Geographic Channel documentary in which George had participated. And researcher Dick Rayner said George told him he had faked a photograph in 1986 that he claimed was genuine in the Nat Geo documentary. Although he admitted in October 2013 that his 2011 photo was a hoax, he insisted that the 1986 photo was genuine. Number 3. David Elder Video On August 27, 2013, tourist David Elder presented a 5-minute video of a mysterious wave in the law. According to David, the wave was produced by a 15-foot solid black object just under the surface of the water. Now, David from East Kilbride, South Lanarkshire, was taking a picture of a swan in the Fort Augustus Pier on the southwestern end of the loch when he captured the movement. He said the water was very still at the time and there were no ripples coming off the waves and no other activity on the water. Skeptics suggest that the wave may have been caused by a wind gust, but I'd like to think that it was Nessie. Number 2. Peter McNabb On July 29, 1955, Peter McNabb took a photograph at Yerkhart Castle that depicted two long black humps in the water. The photograph was not made public until it appeared on Constant White's 1957 book on the subject of the Loch Ness Monster, and on October 23, 1958, it was published by the Weekly Scotsman. Author Ronald Binns wrote the phenomenon which McNabb photographed could easily be a wave effect resulting in three trawlers traveling closely together up the loch. Other researchers considered the photograph a hoax, and Roy McCall requested to use the photograph in his 1976 book. He received an original negative from McNabb, but discovered it was different from the photograph that appeared in White's book. The tree at the bottom left in White's was missing from the negative, and it is suspected that the photograph was doctored by re-photographing the print. And coming at number one is George Spicer. Interest in the monster was sparked by a sighting on July 22, 1933, when George Spicer and his wife saw the most extraordinary form of an animal cross the road in front of their car. They described the creature as having a large body, about 4 feet high and 20 feet long, and a long, wavy, narrow neck, slightly thicker than an elephant's trunk, and as long as the 10 to 12 foot width of the road. They saw no limbs, and it lurched across the road towards the lock 20 yards away, leaving a trail of broken undergrowth in its wake. George described it as the nearest approach to dragon a prehistoric animal that I have ever seen in my life, and as having a long neck which moved up and down in a manner of a scenic railway. It had an animal in its mouth and a body that was fairly big with a high back, but if there were any feet it must have been the web kind, and as far as a tail I cannot say as it moved so rapidly, and when we got to the spot it had probably disappeared into the lock. We have Nessie is real. <laughs> Okay guys, the Loch Ness Monster is real. At least that's what I think after watching this recent video shot from the air looking down upon the water. There is literally a long neck looking dinosaur in the water and it has to be Nessie himself. Herself? Is Nessie a girl? This is definitely some footage that has been buried deep by the governments of the world, including the FBI. And why, you may ask? Damn, I don't know. Perhaps the discovery of this ancient creature could mean that there's more magical creatures out there. It could mean that there is a portal to a new world in the lake. Or perhaps it means that the wizarding world of Harry Potter is real. Anyways, this video I think is substantial proof that the cryptid that is known as the Loch Ness monster is in fact real. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to smash that like button as it really helps us out. In our number 9 spot, we have the Deep Sea Cryptid. 
Okay, this footage blew my mind when I saw it. I personally think this is proof of yet another mythical ocean creature slash cryptid that we are unaware of yet. The ocean is so big and mysterious, I bet you even mermaids exist. <laughs> In August of 2018, the Japan Agency of Marine Earth Science and Technology when they found something in the waters of Sagami Bay near Tokyo. A big creature with big glowing eyes and a gaping mouth. Now at first it appears to move, but as the camera gets closer, it appears to freeze in place. And so, since we don't see it move much, some people say that it's an illusion of a creature and that it's really just a rock that looks like it has eyes, as humans have a tendency to see faces in inanimate objects. But what if? if it's a creature that became aware of the fact that it was being watched and so it froze to look like a rock. This creature legit looks like it stepped right out of Monsters Inc. I don't know. Anyways, this footage could be nothing or it could be everything and that's why it's possible that it's being marketed as possibly nothing. In our number 8 spot we have the hide behind. I had no idea what this was before I researched this video, but apparently there is an ancient creature known as a hide behind. And these creatures used to hide in forests and were nocturnal, and they would prey upon humans that wander the woods such as lumberjacks. They are said to be able to conceal themselves, the creature quickly hides behind an object so it's not directly seen. This is how it's able to attack attack human prey by stalking them from afar and not be seen. Anyways, now that you know what a hide behind is, this video that was captured by a grandmother certainly shows a creature that looks just like a hide behind. A shadow, if you will. If this video was not staged, and it is real, like they claim, then I definitely think this is proof of some kind of hide behind or mythical creature. Perhaps it's Bigfoot, but certainly this shadowy figure doesn't seem completely normal. In our number 7 spot we have the Kraken. The giant squid known around the world as the Kraken is an enormous squid-like sea monster originally from Scandinavian folklore. People believe tales of the creature were created after fishermen spotted giant squid out on the water. Anyways, recently something very mysterious was discovered when zooming into the middle of the sea on Google Earth. A strange, large creature that appears to light up and looks to be very large and is creating a wake. Google Earth's measuring tool has shown that the wake is over 250 meters wide. This picture has surely had the FBI concerned as the internet has been going crazy trying to figure out if that's a Kraken, an ancient dinosaur-like fish, or an alien craft that perhaps crashed into the water or is in the water. Without a doubt though, there's something mysterious going on there. Where is the light coming from, my friends? My vote is for alien craft. That makes more sense in terms of where the light is coming from. In our number six spot, we have the alien sea creature. This may be our biggest piece of proof that aliens might live underneath us or in the water. This video captured from a Brazilian beach was buried deep online, probably by the FBI because of its mysteriousness. It showcases a very strange looking creature in the water that looks just like every picture of an alien that I've ever seen. Ever think about where we originally got our idea for how aliens look? Yeah, well probably from meeting them, or possibly from seeing creatures like this. This creature looks like it has arms and legs and is just walking around the shore and isn't seemingly looking threatening, just going about and doing its thing. It was described as a jellyfish like monster. If that isn't an alien, then please explain to us what that is. Conclusion? It's an alien, an alien sea creature. In our number five spot, we have the baby dragon. A video was shot showing a creature in a pond that literally looks exactly like the ancient Chinese dragon that we see in folklore. Or they look like Khaleesi's dragons when they were babies. <laughs> 
Game of Thrones, anyone? Anyways, this video is wild, it's very, very strange. This creature is exactly like every image of a dragon that I'm sure you've ever seen, and it is just swimming around in the water. Dragons are so embedded into many cultures and over many civilizations, people believed in dragons, and so it just makes you think perhaps they were once real, or perhaps they are real. It's possible though that the old civilizations just stumbled across dinosaur bones that made them think fire breathing dragons were real too. That's very possible. But in any case, this specific video hasn't been proven to be real, so it's possible that it's fake. But if it were to be real, I'm sure a narrative narrative would be spun around it because that would be a massive discovery that humans may not be ready for. In our number four spot we have Bigfoot. Look, there are so many stories and supposed sightings of the Mudman, Bigfoot, and honestly, this one is the most interesting one yet. A trail cam was deep in the woods when it captured a giant creature walking through the wood. It might be behind a row of trees, but it is clear as day that this creature is big, whatever it is. It appears to have hands and feet. It doesn't move like a bear. It moves like an oversized human. So this could very well be the best footage of Bigfoot that I've ever seen. Apparently the people that took this footage tend to upload footage of animals and bears and have no drive to tamper with the footage, so a lot of people believe it to be real. Also apparently after this they set up more trail cams in the hopes of seeing it again, but all of the additional cams went missing. Whoa, that's a smart Bigfoot right there. Making sure to watch the humans and get rid of all the evidence. Anyways, I think this is definitely footage the FBI would be worried about, so they themselves could have destroyed the trail cams. In our number three spot, we have the Blue Mountains Panther. The Blue Mountains Panther is a creature from Australian folklore that is that is essentially a giant panther that lives in the mountains of Australia. This panther has had sightings for centuries. However, Australia isn't known to have any kind of panther on the continent. Anyways, a picture of what looks like a giant cat-like creature, most likely a panther, was caught on camera and it's had Australia in a tizzy. It's the Blue Mountain Panther everyone thinks. It's clear as day that it's a cat-like creature and it looks like a panther. If it is not this mythical creature, then what is it? Would love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. In our number two spot, we have Sasquatch. This next footage is really interesting and something I know has been buried because of the sheer amount of people that can confirm its validity. While on a ski slope, a bunch of skiers had to stop as they appeared to see a giant in the woods. Everything you have ever heard about Sasquatch would describe what these people saw. Harry, ape-like, living in the woods. The footage captured shows it trying to hide, but without a doubt, it was seen by many, and that would certainly put a dent in the theory that Sasquatch is a mythological creature. Some people think that our human ancestors or relatives could have survived into the modern era, and so this creature could just be a human ancestor. If this is true, then one, there must be two of them to have continued on the species sees like this or two if there's only one is this an is this an immortal human ancestor from centuries ago the latter would certainly be cooler we discovered how to fly in the sky perhaps we humans have discovered everlasting life and the general public just doesn't know about it yet side thought <laughs> in our number 1 spot an elf on a First Nation reserve in Saskatchewan, a strange creature was caught on camera that quite possibly the FBI doesn't want you to see. In the video, you see a creature go behind a large rock when the person recording the video turns their light on. It's kinda hard to make out exactly what it is. Some people think that it's an elf or a fairy or a wendigo, a type of shape-shifting creature that is evil. Honestly, I don't know what it is, but it appears to be some kind of mythical creature. People have been reporting seeing this monster for thousands of years, and so it makes you think that there might be something to this video, and it could very well showcase something no human has officially been able to confirm before on camera. I hope it's an elf. That sounds way better than an evil shapeshifter. <laughs> if elves exist, they should just come and live among us. I bet you us humans would accept them. 
how could we not? They're so cute and cool. Just because we've got to get this one out of the way early, you either love them or hate them, are so sick of hearing about them, or literally can't get enough. Half of you are gonna roast me in the comments for even mentioning them, and the other half would have been pissed if I didn't bring them up. So, did you guess mermaids? Okay, good, because it was obvious. Mermaids are probably the most popular mythical creatures to date, with origin stories coming from just about every corner of the globe. And just in case you've been living under an actual boulder, mermaids are humanoid mammal fish that generally come with the top half of a beautiful woman and the bottom half of some kind of mix between dolphins and marlin. Also known as sirens and said to be quite the charmers with a nice set of pipes as thousands of stories exist about the creatures luring sailors to their watery death with nothing more than their beauty and a song. I guess beauty really is in the eye of the drunken sailor because it appears as though what was once thought to be a creature of ultimate fantasy is actually just a manatee or dugong, also referred to as a sea cow. So, myth busted? Well, the thing is, manatees are generally only found in waters of about 3 to 7 feet deep, maximum 10 to 17, which kind of begs the question, are we really sure that a dugong is all the sailors saw out on the rolling deep sea in the dead of night? Well, I'll put it to you this way. To date, only 5% of the ocean has been explored, so we never really know. Next up, we have the Lernaean Hydra, a creature that finds its origins based in Greek mythology. The Hydra is said to have been birthed by the mother and father of monsters, and to have three to seven heads, toxic breath and blood, as well as regenerative and immortal properties. Hercules was the one to defeat the creature in a daring battle in which he cut off the monsters' heads only to watch in horror as they grew back stronger. Eventually, however, Hercules realized that by cauterizing the point of birth, breakage between neck and head, he no longer had this problem. As Hercules came closer to victory, the mother of the beast, fearful for its demise, sent a giant crab down to the river in which the snake-like creature lived in order to assist it in the battle. But success was not given to the monsters that day as they both perished in the fight. A three-headed corn snake, appropriately named none other than Hydra, is our modern day version of the giant reptilian creature. The three heads are due to a phenomenon referred to as poly cephaly that creates mutations within the animals. What do you think? So you know the giant crab I mentioned like just a minute ago? Well yeah, that's actually real too. Surprise! This mythical creature comes to us in the form of a Japanese spider crab. These monsters that come from the deep sea are massive, with a possible leg span of up to 13 feet across and a diet that consists of dead or decaying fish so basically corpses. Not only that, but the creatures are said to be immortal as they are thought to live for over a hundred years and also have the ability to regenerate their limbs. Another fun fact, when the giant crab reaches adulthood, its center body stops growing, but just like human ears and noses, its legs will continue to grow throughout its lifespan. Oh, and females of the species can also lay up to 1.5 million eggs within a single birthing season, so yeah. Super cool. Next on the list, we have the Ningen, a staple of mid-2000s Japanese folklore. This aquatic whale-like humanoid is said to roam throughout the icy waters of the Antarctic region. The creature was reportedly first sighted by both Japanese fishing and research vessels claiming to have seen the human-like figures within the waters beneath their boats. The Ningen, which means human in Japanese, is said to be somewhere between 60 and 90 feet long, meaning it's ginormous, and many people believe the animal's existence is being covered up by the government because of the fact that the original video said to have captured the Ningen has since been wiped from all corners of the internet. However, it appears that three photographs do still remain available for our viewing pleasure. One, taken from a remote operated camera that depicts the creature in a greenish glow, another from an aerial view showing off its massive size, and one more captured through ROV, remote operated vehicle footage, depicting the creature floating eerily in the the dark of the deep sea. At our halfway point, we have the jackalope. Believe it or not, the horned rabbit is in fact real and also 
way creepier than we thought. The legend of the jackalope found its origins in North American folklore described as a jackrabbit with the horns of an antelope. While some cultures view the animal as an omen of bad luck, others view it as a sign of good fortune. In reality, it's actually neither. I mean, it's kind of bad luck for the rabbit, as the occurrence of the horns, which look more like random spikes than antelope antlers, is due to a disease called Shope palinoma virus, which originally appeared in cottontails, not jackrabbits, and is closely related to the HPV virus. However, the Shope strain is non-transmittable from animals to humans. The disease which causes hard, dark warts to grow on the face of cottontails has now also been found within bush rabbits, black-tailed jackrabbits, Rabbits, snowshoe hares, European rabbits, and even domestic ones too. Next we have the sea serpent, not something you really want to see on a day out in the water. Or maybe you do, as mythologically speaking, serpents were said to be representative of creative life force as well as fertility. Along with that, the fabled shedding of the oceanic reptile skin has been said to represent transformation, rebirth, and immortality. So how does all this talk of omens and myths translate to reality? The Titano Boa, a 47 foot long aquatic snake estimated to have lived 58 to 60 million years ago, discovered, fossilized of course, in the early 2000s by the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute in a coal mine deep within the rainforests of Colombia. Now, because the Titanoboa is now extinct, I'll give you a two for one. Today, scientists believe that the creature many sailors mistakenly mistook for a sea serpent is none other than the oarfish. As I mentioned in my previous video, that thing can grow up to be 36 feet long, making it the largest bony fish alive today. No 47 foot long prehistoric sea snake, but it is pretty close. This next one is for all of my Game of Thrones fans out there who I'm pretty sure like me will be very happy to learn that no not dragons guys I'm a researcher not a miracle worker but like I said dire wolves actually do exist. Well did exist like I said I'm no miracle worker. Episcion Haydeni as they are scientifically referred to went extinct around 5 million years ago so we just missed them but our human ancestors might have lived amongst them as our earliest record of human life does date back back to sometime between 5 and 7 million years ago. The massive canid would have stood 35 inches, about 3 feet tall at the shoulder, and had a length of just 1.2 inches shy of 8 feet long. The largest canine alive today, and therefore the closest depiction we have to the dire wolf, is the gray wolf, which comes in at an honestly just slightly less impressive shoulder height of 30 inches and body length of 6 feet. Next up is the Kraken. Like mermaids, I guarantee you've heard of this one before, but if not, here it goes. A gigantic legendary sea monster and another yet major enemy of our seafaring sailor friends, the Kraken has been known to sink ships in minutes with its gigantic squid-like tentacles and beak. Well, not so much squid-like as squid exactly. Thought to be nothing more than a myth up until 1856 when the discovery of the giant squid took place in 1856 when a Danish zoologist uncovered records of Danish men having caught the creature all the way back in 1550. The largest giant squid, also known as the chief squid, discovered to date is an insane 13 meters long, that's almost 43 feet, and weighs 495 kilograms, which is 1,091 pounds. So while the animal probably wouldn't have been able to sink gigantic fleets of Voyager ships as the legends tell, I'm guessing it wouldn't have much trouble taking down a rowboat or two. Guys, I hate to do this to you because I so wanted it to be true that an inconceivably large shark species was roaming around the deep to one day be discovered by marine scientists and research experts, but the thing is, the megalodon just isn't that big. I mean, it's huge, but also some reports have suggested that it's literally the same size as a whale shark, and actually a bit smaller, as the largest whale shark apparently measured up to 18.5 meters, 60 feet, whereas the megalodon was said to have measured in at just 18 meters, 59 feet. But I get it, you're looking for a giant carnivorous shark. So let me give you this. An even bigger shark, I'm talking about a mega-sized megalodon, 
possibly measuring in at more than 30 meters or 100 feet, might have existed at some point. You see, before humans began spreading out across the globe, there was something called megafauna, which basically just refers to really large animals, some examples being the dire wolf, mammoths, saber-toothed tigers, and woolly rhinoceroses. When humans began to encroach on the lands of these animals, it is predicted that there was not enough resources to support both them and our homo sapien ancestors. And because they were much larger than us, and therefore most likely had longer gestation periods and required more food and land, as we said hello to the agricultural revolution, we unfortunately waved goodbye to the majority of the world's megafauna on land. And when the fishing industry began to pick up, aquatic megafauna began to die off as well, most likely including the mega megalodon. But who knows? Again, only 5% of the ocean has been explored to date. All right, guys, before we get into the last one, please let me know the weirdest creature that you've ever seen down below in the comments. Lastly, we have the chimera, a creature often referred to in Greek mythology as an amalgamation of many different animals fused together. And this thing is so cool to look at. The creature was discovered in the 1980s in the Karoo region of South Africa, and it's still around today. But the earliest fossil found so far dates all the way back to to around 280 million years ago. But it is said that the species first came to be after diverging from their shark relatives almost 400 million years ago. Due to their ghostly appearance and their close relation to sharks via their prehistoric shark ancestors, this species has been appropriately nicknamed the ghost shark. Straightforward, I like it. The ghost shark can be found in pretty much all oceans except for the Arctic at a depth of about 2,600 to 8,500 feet. They weigh generally between 5.5 to 8.8 pounds and are a cartilage-based animal. They have one gill on either side of their bodies and have an upper jaw fused to their skull. Think about taking a swim with one of these as you fall asleep tonight. Have the New Zealand monster. In 2013, a woman called Elizabeth Ann uploaded a video to YouTube of this creature washed up on Pukahina Beach. New Zealand. Now, most of its 30 foot or 9 meter long body was buried in the sand, leaving only its flippers and a mouth filled with sharp teeth visible. Elizabeth said it had been washed up during a recent storm and appeared to have been attacked by something else in the water. Before tests were even done, people were speculating about an even bigger creature out there, a killer of sea monsters. At number 9 now, we have the Raystown Ray. This one comes from Pennsylvania's Raystown Lake. Now, for many years, locals there reported seeing a large, shadowy figure just below their boats, sending them rocking in the turbulence. Then, a local fisherman finally snapped these pictures of it. They quickly spread around the world until the managing director of the lake admitted they had known about the creature for quite a while. Personally described it as a private creature that often came to the surface in April, that it was a vegetarian, and that humans were most likely safe around it. But knowing all this didn't satisfy adventurers who still visit Raystown every April hoping for a glance. Moving on to number 8 now, we have the Corfu sea creature. In 2015, a Scottish tourist called Harvey Robertson was visiting the Greek island of Corfu and took some pictures inside a sea cave. Now, it wasn't until he looked at them later that he noticed this strange creature in the frame. As this image spread online, even the experts were baffled about what it could possibly be. It appeared to have a nose and snout and looked nothing like the usual animals found in that area. Harvey himself said it looked like a creature from Greek mythology. Next up at number 7, we're going to Australia. In February 2017, the internet was very confused to see this image of a strange creature that washed ashore on Fremantle Beach in Western Australia. Its body was ash grey on top with a white underbelly. It was already decomposing when it was discovered, but people noted that there were parts of it missing. How it got there, what it was, and who or what had taken huge chunks out of it are still being hotly debated. Moving on to number 6 now, we have the Montauk Monster. In July 2008, the Montauk Monster washed ashore on the Ditch Plains Beach, Montauk. The media went into a frenzy as people tried to figure out what it was. Its legs appeared too long to be a raccoon, sea turtles don't have fur or teeth, dogs don't have those kind of eyes or feet, and sheep's teeth aren't that sharp. Some people still maintain that it was a raccoon. Now, the issue would have been put to rest if scientists were able to examine the corpse, but as quickly as it 
it appeared, it disappeared not long after and has never been seen again. Alright, next up at number 5 now, we have the Hook Island Sea Monster. On December 12th, 1964, photographer Robert Le Sarek was in a rowboat off Hook Island in Queensland, Australia. Suddenly, heading towards him and his family in the water was a huge 80 foot long creature. Robert quickly grabbed his camera and snapped these pictures you're seeing now. It appeared to be some sort of giant water snake with a tadpole like head. As it came closer, Robert said it appeared to have smooth skin, no fins, pale eyes and a white mouth with no teeth. He also said it had a wound on its back and that could have been the reason why it was taking shelter in the bay. As he tried to take more pictures, it seemed to get annoyed, it quickly turned around and swam into deeper waters. Alright, coming in at number 4 now, we have the Windermere Worm. In 2006, kayaker Tom Pickles took this picture of a creature in Lake Windermere, England. Now at first, he thought it was a duck, but as he got closer, he could see just how huge this thing was under the water. Tom said it was about the size of 3 cars and it sped past him. He estimated it was moving at about 10 miles per hour. The 3 humps you can see in the picture were moving in a rippling snake like motion. Other people were very pleased to see this picture because it confirmed to them that their own sightings of the Windermere worm were real. Next up at number 3 now we have the Larget Float Worm, otherwise known as the Icelandic Worm Monster. For almost 700 years, locals near Lake Larget Float in Iceland have reported seeing a huge serpentine creature there. Along with the pictures of it, it's been described as being longer than a bus and has even been sighted lying outside of the water, sometimes slithering into the trees. Terrifying thought. Even the head of the Icelandic National Forest Service said they saw it. For the locals though, this isn't a good thing, as the 700 year old legend says that bad things follow the worm monster sighting. Moving on to number 2 now, we're going to Russia in June 2015, where a prehistoric like mutant creature washed up on the shore of Sak Halen Island. Now, as you can see, it was a very shocking sight for the people there to find. The bloodied, ripped up carcass was twice the size of a dolphin, with thick hair hanging off it. Marine biologists were very puzzled. Nothing they knew seemed to match this sight of an enormous dolphin like creature with a beak and fur. Some people think it might have come from warmer waters to die. And finally, at number one, we have the Loch Ness Monster. What else could it be, really? It's possibly the most famous sea monster of them all. It had been a local legend at Loch Ness in Scotland for over 1400 years, but ever since it was first photographed in 1933, the stories and pictures have captured the world's imagination. Nessie is said to be a large dinosaur looking creature, almost like a plesiosaur, but with extra humps on its back. Some of the pictures have been outed as hoaxes, others have been explained away as natural objects in the water, but for the Nessie enthusiasts of today, there is no smoke without fire. They believe that even if you take away all of the fakes, there are still many stories and many pictures that need explaining. If you found this video interesting, then you have to check out this video next. It's about cybersecurity threats that are actually predicted to end the world. Click the video now to find out more, because this just got super scary.